everybody. I just launched my brand new course called How to Start and Grow Your Online Hair Extension Business. Check out the link below to get started. Hey ladies, this is Brianna, and I will teach you how to do tree braid cornrows. I already taught you how to do tree braids and cornrows, and now I decided to combine both looks together. Subscribe for more hair tutorials for beginners so that you can do them on yourself for free. My YouTube dream is to get my channel to 500,000 subscribers, and we are almost there. Now click that subscribe button so we can get started. These are the materials that you will need to create your tree braid cornrows. You're gonna need a hairbrush, edge control, scissors and a parting comb, a wide tooth comb, hair curlers and duck bill clips, as well as braiding hair. I'm using the color 30 and 33 to create this beautiful color pattern with my hair. As you can see, I have two ponytails where I need to braid. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate on one of these sections how to do tree braid cornrows. When parting your hair, make sure that you part wider at the top and more narrow at the back so all of the braids can reach the back of your head. And then you're gonna grab a large chunk of braiding hair. The color hair I have here is color number 33. You wanna make sure that you also feather the ends of your hair, meaning pull on the ends so that the ends come to a tapered point. And then you're gonna clean them up with your hair cutting scissors. Just keep in mind not to cut straight across because you want it to taper to a fine point. So after cleaning it up, you can see how neat the ends look. And now I'm just gonna combine it together to show you how great the hair looks when you do the feathering technique. I always prefer the feathering technique when doing cornrow braids, so that way the ends can come to a slight tapered point for a natural look. Now we're going to begin parting for our cornrow tree braids. And when you're doing these tree braid cornrows, you have to do two cornrow braids. So this section is going to be divided into two. Make sure your parting is very neat, going all the way to the back of your head. So now you're gonna use duck bill clips to clip one side out of the way. It doesn't matter which side you start on. So as you can see, this is how it should look and I'm gonna start braiding my corn roll on the right side of my head. So we're gonna start at the very front and we're gonna braid going all the way to the back, leaving out hairs along the way. Now, if you already know how to do tree braids, then you understand what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm separating small sections of hair that's going to feed into the tree braid cornrow. This is the same technique you would do if you were doing a natural cornrow braid as well. So I'm gonna grab one of the sections and I'm gonna divide it into two. I'm gonna grab that smaller piece, wrap it around the bigger piece, and this is going to form three equal legs for my cornrow braid. Grabbing my three main fingers on my right hand, I pinch that leg there, and as you can see, this is two legs. I'm gonna insert my index of my other hand, and then I'm gonna wrap the rest of my fingers around the hair, as you can see here. Now I'm gonna twirl my right hand underneath. I'm gonna open my index and my thumb to pinch the third leg, so that way I'm in position to begin braiding. And as you can see, those are the three legs for our braid. Now you're gonna start at the very beginning and you're gonna pinch off a very small amount of hair. The braids need to start as close to your hairline as possible. So if you don't know how to cornrow braid, make sure you pay attention to this part. You're gonna always pinch a small piece and you're gonna rotate your hand one after the other as you pick up hair along the way. This is going to create a very natural look with your cornrow braid. So you're just gonna braid a couple times and then you're gonna add the next section of hair and you want to make sure to insert your thumb and index and pinch it open so that way all of the hairs are tight together so that there are no loose strands hanging out when you hook it under your index finger. So as I'm braiding, I'm always hooking the new section under the index finger of my left hand. So that way the loose ends of the hair can hang on the right side of my braid. So I'm grabbing the next piece. I'm doing the same exact technique to loop it in. The perfect time to add extra pieces of hair is when you can free the dominant hand. So that way, the rest of your hair can lay on one side of your braid. All of your pieces of hair have to consistently lay on the same exact side to achieve this look. So now you're gonna grab another piece as you saw before, making sure it's very taut. Hook it under the index of your left hand. 
bring that front piece to your face and the back to the back. So that way you can continue to braid. The easiest way to know which leg to leave out is that you want to pay attention how it naturally falls when you hook it. That piece that's in the front stays in the front. Grab the piece that's near to the back into the braid for your cornrow. The difference between doing these tree braid cornrows and traditional tree braids is that when you're adding hair, you have to add on alternate sides. So that way the loose legs are on both sides of the cornrow braid. That's for traditional tree braids. But for these tree braid cornrows, you want to leave all of the loose ends on one side to create this look. Now after feeding in all of your pieces of hair, you're going to continue to braid all the way down to the ends. The last piece of feeding hair you should have added was at the very base of your neck, the very back of your neck before the braid left your scalp. Now in order to make all your legs equal, you just pinch off a little bit of hair so that they can all come to the same exact point. And this is the final result of one of your cornrow braids with all of the hair feeding in on only one side of your braid. So this is exactly how you should look before you begin braiding your second cornrow braid. So as you can see, now I'm gonna pull over the hair to show you how flawless it looks if you were to leave your hair like this because it looks like you're covering up your braid when you have it on one side as well. Now it's time to create our second cornrow braid. Now with your second cornrow braid, you only need to prepare a little bit of hair that you have in your hands to begin braiding. You do not want to section pieces of hair for your second braid because you don't need to do that. And I'll show you exactly why. So remember, the first braid, you have to prepare a lot of pieces of hair to add. But the second braid, you do not. You only need to start off with this amount of hair for your cornrow braid. So we have our three equal legs here that will serve for our braid. And you wanna make sure that you're opening up your index and your thumb to feed in your real hair into your braiding hair. Now you're gonna pinch off a very small amount of hair at the front of your hairline so that all of your braids can start at the beginning. Now you're gonna open your index and thumb to pinch your real hair. And then you're going to continue to rotate the legs equally with the same amount of tension so that way you can consistently braid your braid. Now, with this second braid we are currently braiding, this is the only amount of braiding hair you need. You don't need individual pieces to add because I'm gonna show you why. Now, after releasing your left hand, you're gonna grab your first section of hair that you added. You're gonna make sure to pull all the hairs together so there are no loose pieces. You're gonna hook it under your index and then you're going to continue braiding. You're gonna do this same motion for every single piece of hair you have on the right side. After freeing my left hand, I go back again and I grab a new section of hair, making sure you clearly divide it away from the braid. Smooth it thoroughly and then hook it underneath your index finger so that you can continue braiding. This is the reason why you did not need to create additional pieces of hair on your lap because you're feeding in hair for this braid that you're currently doing with hair that's hanging on the previous braid that you've just done. So after you continue to do this process, you can see that the tree braiding effect is happening. This kind of reminds me of a belt in a sense because it looks like little tiny loops one after another, like a notch on a belt. So you can also call these braids belt braids if you choose to. I prefer to call these braids tree braid cornrows because it explains exactly what this style looks like. Now in order to have a very seamless look with this style, it's super important that you're fully smoothing out all sections of hair as you are working. So you cannot mindlessly braid the style and not pay attention because your style will not look neat. You always have to smooth your new section of hair you're adding as well as the legs of your braid for a consistent look. And then once you braid all the way down to the ends, your tree braid cornrow is finished. So now that I'm done braiding, check out how beautiful this style looks. Of course you can do this style with black braiding hair, but I decided to switch it up to add some color. And I used color number 30 and color number 33 to achieve this look. So now that all of my braids are finished, I want to show you how gorgeous this style looks. 
So as I've stated before, the really light hair you see there is color number 33, and the darker kind of purplish hair is color number 30. So now I'm gonna show you how to curl the ends since one side is done, I'm gonna show you how to do the other side. Now when you're curling, you don't wanna curl all the way up the braid, you wanna curl up until the braid starts to give you some resistance. So I'm basically only curling the very tips of the hair. Now you're gonna roll the braid onto the tip so that the tips do not unravel off the curler when you dip it in hot water. So make sure your water is super hot because you're gonna dip it in and you want it to curl very effectively and easily. And you're only gonna leave it in the water for about a minute or so. You don't need to leave it in there forever because it curls pretty fast. Make sure you drain all the water off and then transfer your braids to your towel and squeeze dry. Once you fully squeeze dry your curlers, you're gonna unravel one at a time so that you can clean up any stray hairs that are sticking out from your braids. And all you have to do is gently separate them before you begin trimming off the ends. So when you're trimming off, just trim off any visible frizz. You don't have to get super detailed in there because you're not gonna see the little bitty tiny hairs that stick out from the curls. Because when it's all put together, this is how it should look. Now it's time for some edge control. When doing this step, you just need to add very small amounts of edge control that you need and then build upon it if you need more control. Now because I braided my braids so close to my hairline, I actually don't have much edges left out. And if you don't have edges, that's okay. You don't need to do this step. But if you wanna add a little bit of style and you have a little bit of edges left out, then go ahead and style it up. Now I use my nails because I like this look a whole lot better than using my brush. So choose to style your edges exactly how you want. As you can see, I am all done with my hairstyle and I'm so excited to show you exactly how it looks once I put the finishing touches on my edges. So I believe I have about seven actual tree break cornrows on my head, which means I have 14 individual cornrows on my head because two braids have to connect into one. Now, as you can see, I'm cutting off my braids and don't feel sad for me because I do these tutorials to teach you all how to do your own hair. So that's why it's very important that you subscribe and turn on bell notifications so that you can see these hair tutorials for beginners. So after cutting off those ends, you're going to begin unraveling your cornrow braid. Now, if you have any resistance, once you're taking down your braid and you can't go any further, that's because you're taking down the wrong braid. So remember the first braid that you braided where you looped in hair into the second braid? That's the braid you take down, the second braid that had the loose pieces of hair feeding into it. The reason why is because you can effectively take the braids down without any tangling. And when you're taking them down, always smooth all sections of hair so that you don't create any knots at the base of your scalp. So after gently smoothing out the hair from my real hair, this is the actual piece of braiding hair you started with on your second braid. That's all you should take down for now, so that way you knew that you took down the right braid. Now it's time to take down the second braid. And if you remember exactly how we braided, which you should, the first braid that you braided had loose pieces of hair sticking out as you see here. When you're taking it down, this should be the second braid that you take down, not the first braid. Because if you take down this braid first, it's gonna cause a lot of tangling and it's gonna be extremely difficult to remove this style. And this style is so easy to remove. You just wanna make sure that you release the right braid first. And when you're taking this down, always smooth out hair so it doesn't create knots. So that way it's extremely easy to unravel this style from your hair. So now just continue smoothing as you go and don't rush through this process because you don't wanna snag on the ends of your real hair and you don't wanna leave behind any knots. That's why you're gonna always smooth when you're releasing those individual pieces of hair from your cornrow braid. So now that we're down to this last little piece that you see here, still be gentle all the way through the process so that you don't snag your real hair. And as you can see, that's it. That's how you take down a cornrow tree braid. 
Now, if you're not quite sure how to do this style once you actually take it down, make sure to watch this tutorial one more time so that you know exactly how the process goes. And as you can see here, this is a top view of this style and this style is so gorgeous. Doing color with this style brings this look to life. Thank you so much for watching my tree break cornrow tutorial. I love doing these videos for you all and I want to continue doing this, but to do so, I need help from all of you. Subscribe and thumbs up this tutorial to support this channel. My channel has 400,000 subscribers and my goal is to get to 500,000, which means we are almost there. Turn on bell notifications because trust me, you don't want to miss the videos that I'm posting next. Hey everybody, I just launched my brand new course called How to Start and Grow Your Online Hair Extension Business. Check out the link below to get started.